This was May 25th. I remember telling my mom that, you know, God had a plan for my life. I didn't know what that plan was, just that, you know, I knew he had a plan and he was guiding me. Later on that evening, this would be around like probably 11 o'clock, 11.30 at night, um, I'm driving and the next thing I know, I was on top of my roof, my airbags were deployed, my car was literally upside down. I don't know what happened, I don't know if I hit another car freaking out and I don't know how long that went on before a bystander pulled me out of the car and they take me by ambulance to the hospital and, and the, the CHP draws my blood and uh, after getting the blood results um, I, I was positive for cocaine, marijuana, uh, opiates, fentanyl, amphetamine, and benzos. The reason I was in the hospital facing back surgery was because of my drug addiction. There I was at the hospital, uh, Antelope Valley Hospital, at, at midnight on my sister's birthday, just kind of wondering how I got here again, you know. It just seems like these consequences keep getting greater and greater. This was never the plan for my life. I wasn't supposed to fall this hard, doing things I never said I'd do, getting in trouble going to jail, being homeless going to rehab over and over, overdosing constantly. I know at this point that it's, it's my own actions, but I just wanted to bury it with getting high again. And that's what I did. I left AMA and I'm on a very strict, uh, basically bed rest while my back heals. And still, you know, fighting this beast of, I didn't want to be clean. I wasn't ready to get clean. I, I still wanted to use. And this carried on for about three months. It's just get high, get high, get high. After a while of using, you know, the thought comes to me that maybe I should really try one more time to get clean. And uh, I had my brother Dane take me to rehab. And uh, on the way down, I'm, I'm still smoking in his car. I'm in the passenger seat. And, and he looks over at one point and is just like disgusted. He's had it up to here. He doesn't hold a lot of hope that anything's going to come out of this. And I remember kind of like being disgusted with myself in that moment. Something kind of clicked and I just, I was tired of not being taken seriously. And uh, I think that was like my driving factor and like, you know what, I need to actually try for him. I go to this rehab and, and it's the most painful month really of detoxing. It's hard to put into words how terrible that feels. It's like so dark, there's no hope. You're in this treatment center with people puking and screaming in the middle of the night and the gravity of like my situation was hitting me. And, and I remember just consciously like telling myself I need to try and I knew at that moment that my only way out of that was staying close to God because on my own, every time I tried doing it by myself, I failed and failed miserably. But I knew that when I stayed close to God, He could literally get me out of any pickle, any situation that shined the smallest light of hope in my soul. And I ran with that. I, I got a Bible and I started reading it and I started going to their little Sunday service and, and I really took it seriously at some point. I move into sober living and, uh, you know, day by day I'm, I'm working with a sponsor out of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm doing all the things they say you can, you should do. I start applying places for work down there and, and this job comes up uh, as a cashier position. And we do an interview, I do a background check, and any time a place has done a background check, I sort of lose my hopes because you don't generally hire somebody as a cashier dealing with money uh, that's got forgery, check fraud cases. and so. In my infinite human wisdom, I'm thinking there's no way this is going to happen. And, and I remember I was on a hike in, uh, up Topanga Canyon when I got the call that they were going to hire me and give me my first day. And I remember just thanking God right then and there because I knew it was God that did all that right there. I mean, being at the bottom of that pit to now getting a car, getting a job, being trusted again. I have a key to my parents' house again. I mean, it's so crazy, like having a life again. Every day I just I start each day in gratitude for this new life that I have because I know what it's like to not have that, you know. I was able to take all that pain and, and as horrible as drug addiction was, like to make sense of it all, like maybe God let me go through all that so I could get closer to Him and share this with somebody else someday and, and you know, help save someone else's kid. God had a plan and I put in my 10% and He does 90 of it and it's just, it's beautiful.